the fruits of the sculptor's labor were about to take on a new life inside the computer. They first had to be scanned by a laser which probed every nook and cranny to transfer the physical models to virtual ones. have to be taught how to walk, run and swim and some of them would even have to fly. In fact a giant pterosaur was one of the more unbelievable animals. How should it fly? How for that matter would a reptile with a 12 meter wingspan even get off the ground? This was just one of many questions paleontologists were asked to answer. How on earth could an animal this size fly? It looks so massive, but in fact, it's a bit of an optical illusion. This massive head here weighed very little indeed. In fact, the whole animal probably only weighed a few tens of pounds. But one of the keys to their success as flyers is in the way the bones were engineered. The skeleton is exceedingly lightly constructed, and all of the bones are hollow, probably filled with air sacs, and engineered in such a way that they would resist twisting and buffeting around by the wind. So in fact, the whole of the skeleton of this was exceedingly light, but at the same time, exceedingly strong. This meant that they were incredible flyers. Well, the first thing that happened was that the paleontologists arrived en masse and told us what they knew about dinosaur movement, about the length of the bones, about the limits of motion of the skeletal structure. That's not the case. If you put the scapula onto the forelimb and articulate that whole thing, the links are almost equal and it, it opens the door. They can tell us this dinosaur did not move its neck higher than 20 degrees. From there, it will come right round and you can sort of come down here. They can tell us this animal did not run because if it did, it would fall over and break all of its limbs. They're going to tend to move in a slightly ponderous way. Don't the whiz off like greyhounds. But when it finally comes down to it, it's up to the animators because there's an awful lot they can't tell us. You can't, you can't learn that by looking at bones. You've got to animate them. I think you guys just solved the problem. And so all this expertise was slowly put into practice as the characters were animated limb by limb. The pterosaur was shortly flying again, tentatively at first, but it would soon get the hang of it. Others turned out to be more difficult. Animating the Tyrannosaurus is quite tricky because he's basically a five-ton sort of bird, really. I'm trying to get the weight into his feet, so I've got to do lots of squash and stretch around his feet and ankles to try and make him look heavy. Well, this is tricky because we've got flippers, and there's nothing in the world today that swims this way, so we have to devise a system for it. Uh, well, one of the problems with the steg and with most of the other dinosaurs is the fact that their back legs are a lot longer than their front legs. And because we can't have these little front legs shuffling along like that, we have to sort of come up with a solution for that. And that's what I'm working on at the moment. Diplodocus is going to be really hard to animate because it's such a big creature. As you can see, the tail is absolutely massive and uh, the neck is as well. And um, it's going to be hard to get both things working together. <laughs> 